Greetings. Today is Monday, February 22nd, the year 2021. And this is an announcement that tomorrow I begin my campaign officially for mayor of St. Paul. I have a statement that I'd like to read to you for the next few minutes, if you may have the time. Dear citizens of St. Paul, business community members, and fans of St. Paul everywhere, this month marks the 27th anniversary of my art gallery and frame shop opening, specifically here in my hometown's downtown. In early 1994, I did this because I was concerned about then what was happening to our city, and I believe I would be of some help here rather than elsewhere in St. Paul or Minneapolis or a suburb. Five years ago, I also opened a small cafe and a music venue. They have operated jointly here for several years now. Because of my interest in St. Paul's well-being, which began in 1980 when I was 18, I have been active in civic affairs and in many issues facing this city. I have campaigned for mayor once and then for city council a number of times, finishing a respectable second place in all but one of them. I campaigned on honest concerns and projections about what was in store for this city under current leadership. It has been hard to watch as I've survived during a sustained contraction of our commercial and retail environment downtown, greater than any city in America during this time. In its place, our city is becoming ever more an economic suburb to Minneapolis and even to Bloomington in some respects. In late January, Mayor Carter announced that he will be seeking re-election. I believe he is a fine person, but his leadership style to date, in my opinion, has not been serving the city well. More than a few times over the years and during his time on the city council, I have reached out to him in a helpful manner, but he continued down a path he had pre-chosen. I respect this, but then I can only say with all due respect that St. Paul will continue remaining trapped in its own unending version of the emperor's new clothes. Further, I have traveled much of this nation and to many points beyond, and the word unique is indeed true when affixed to Minnesota's capital city. However, for all St. Paul's loveliness, its setting and its history, its architecture and its neighborhoods and its public places and waterways throughout, and of course its citizens, for all of it, unless we can acknowledge that we have been weakened by a string of elected officials their policies, and their neglect, frankly, we can't truly raise St. Paul up again. We have major issues to address. In part, they are ever higher tax and fee increases to pay for unrestrained spending and poor investment. As countless people have been economically harmed, City Hall's answer is for even more oversight of people's lives and businesses. Two, ever higher crime rates and disrespect for law and order. It is traceable to elected officials picking and choosing which laws they want enforced. Additionally, recent mayors with an eye on state or national office and city council members with an eye on the mayor's seat have ensured the true amount of crime remains underreported. Our reputation, number three, our reputation and economic standing in the metro area and region continues to contract. Massive infusion of hundreds massive infusions of hundreds of millions of dollars from the local, state, and federal levels, and millions of dollars for expert planners and their expert plans haven't stopped it. Number four, our sense of St. Paul being a destination for fun, special events, and activities has been greatly harmed and diminished. Mayor Carter, in partnership with our city council, even defunded our July 4th fireworks in 2018. Electing to send those funds to places elsewhere they deemed more important. Fine. However, they then turned away offers by private parties to pay for them. Five. Lastly, 2020 was a very difficult year for many of you. And many of you who call St. Paul home and for many who have businesses here as well. And 2021 will continue to challenge many of you. I'm very sorry for the pain you have experienced and for the ongoing difficulties that have been placed in front of you. Is there hope? Yes. With 100% certainty, I tell you that the challenges facing the city can be overcome and they can be overcome in short order. Many of them can. 
To begin, we must break the pattern of electing those who have contributed to the circumstances we are in. My predictions in the past were not wrong, and they are not wrong now. Two, the great majority of eligible voters, 80% and sometimes 85%, typically do not vote in city elections held in odd-numbered years. This needs to improve, ladies and gentlemen. Three, in the coming weeks and months, my independent, nonpartisan campaign will unfold, and tomorrow I will begin an eight-month journey of going door-to-door -door daily, except holidays, to say hello introduce, and to introduce myself to registered voters across this city. No neighborhood will be overlooked. Additionally, in two-plus months, please reserve this date, Sunday, May 9th at 3 p.m. Together, we will hold our first joint in-person and online public forum, the likes of which you have not seen before. The location will be announced in early April. And at its conclusion, our platform and achievable plans to address the serious problems before us will be adopted. In part, they will importantly include overhauling the city's website so that citizens responsibly communicating with elected officials and city staff will have the option and right of publicly sharing them and the responses received. Ignored emails and or misinformation from City Hall will become a thing of the past. Ensuring a citywide crime map, this is very important, that is updated daily with each dot taking users to a crime report is easily found on the city's website. Recognizing that until the last of the post May 2020 riots chain link fences and barricades surrounding any police station and newly installed roll down riot protection window shields are removed the city is not truly safe ensuring the public can participate easily in its drafting and have the right to vote on the mayor's proposed budgets including tax and fee increases before the city council does final page Lastly, ensuring up or down referendums are held for renewed ranking, ranked choice voting, moving city elections to even numbered years, term limits for elected officials, removing elected officials ability to vote themselves pay raises, and that our July 4th fireworks are an official city function annually. I would like to have you have the right to vote on those issues. As this city's mayor, I will welcome the wisdom, opinions, and foresight of the people of this city each and every day after we have been elected to City Hall. I will be a public servant in the highest regard, and I will end City Hall's practice of dividing people over their differences in favor of uniting us in shared goals, shared dreams, and shared expectations. Weekly now until Election Day this November 2nd, I will send out video and written communications, typically I look for them on a Monday, along with ongoing information how you can best help me to help this city, its citizens, and its business community. Hang in there. 2021 will be a good year, and 2022 will be even better. Thank you.